This is a storage heater. Yeah, if you're kind of like us, well, at least me, moving from a warmer climate, you have no idea what this thing is or what it actually does. So on today's video, we're talking about how to solve this pesky problem of almost always cold Irish houses in the winter time. Hi, I'm the rum, and behind the camera is the wine. Hi. We made lots of videos before about what it's like moving to Ireland. Now, we're gonna talk about what it's actually like living here in one of Europe's fastest growing economies. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, please do subscribe. So, this thing right here, the storage heater, it's a kind of interesting thing. Most people kind of think that you plug it in, turn it on, and it just delivers heat. No, this thing here has some sort of brick in it that actually heats up during the night. So in Ireland, for those who don't know, some houses, or a lot of them, or most of them, have daytime and nighttime rates. This guy, this guy works during the nighttime to heat up this brick so that during the day, you've got this warm air coming out of the vents. Interesting thing that I only learned literally researching this topic is that there's two switches that it has. One is for daytime and one is for nighttime. So in our old flat, we had one too, and we always lament because it was kind of old by then, and so the heat wouldn't last the entire day. So late at night, I'd be like, this thing's useless. But apparently, the second light switch is for daytime stuff. You can just simply boost it and get normal electricity, well, the more expensive daytime rates, that way. Yeah, um, one little thing about these things is that when you first get it, yeah, you need to kind of let it charge overnight. So for the very first day, if you're unlucky, yeah, there is no, no heat to be had. And also there are two switches. Remember these two switches, cause a lot of people in the apartment complex were coming in and just like, but I turned on the switch, it's not working. Yeah, two of them. <laughs> <laughs> As you might have realized, it's a shower. You're probably familiar with it. So the thing that really surprised us when we moved into this newly built apartment is that the shower has actual knobs, things that you can adjust the temperature with and the water pressure with. That is not necessarily always the case. In the other places we've lived in, we always had a power shower. I don't know why it's called that way. I always thought that means it's very powerful, but it pretty much just means there is one button that you can press and a little bit of a dial that you can adjust the temperature with. And that's it. You get the water, the water pressure that you get pretty much. Like some have slightly a bit to adjust that, but that, that's it. You just press a button, you get water and that's it. To be fair, by the end of it, we got quite used to that because there's nothing lazier than walking into the shower, pressing a button, and it already has the exact temperature that you want and you don't have to do anything else. But it's also nice to have some more options to choose from. So if you've been in Dublin airport in the, I guess, recent years, we haven't been there in a long time, I can't say for sure if they still have the posters up. But what they used to have is like a decorative display as you walk through the endless hallways of like the typical things that Irish parents say when you go on holiday. And one of them that I've also heard as a joke a lot from Irish people is people annoying you about did you leave the immersion on? Are you sure you turned it off? Are you sure you turned it off? Should we turn around to make sure it's turned off? So you're probably wondering, what is this immersion? Why is everyone so paranoid about it? Well, the way it works in the way that we understand it is, is basically you have your washer tank and to heat it, it's essentially like one big kettle electric kettles. So you have like the rods and with electricity, those then heat the water. Sounds expensive, it also is, hence people being paranoid about having left it on. The more modern type immersions, where you don't necessarily always have to go and press the button like 10 minutes or something before you want to go shower, always also have a kind of timer in them, so your water will get heated when you're like, I shower in the mornings, you would set it, the timer, to be heated in the mornings. And then they have a boost function, and it's usually that boost function you have to watch out for because it gets a lot more expensive. So for the next few things, 
Yeah, these aren't things that are using electricity or something like that. These are the things that can use already existing heat. And, of course, we have clothes. Yeah, the thing is that if you're wearing extra clothes, extra layers, you don't need all of the heat to heat the house. So this can be a very economical way to do it. As you can see, we're always almost wearing hoodies all the time. Not in all the videos. Me especially, because, you know, I love a hoodie. Yes. No, I was wearing hoodies all the time in Barbados. But we do wear a lot of hoodies whenever we're going to university and the cold ESC classes or the blistering night temperatures during the winter of about 22, 23, ooh, even 21 degrees. Yeah, that's when people's hoodies come out. But what we started doing, instead of your usual hoodies, we even, you know, you know our, our session, our love of outdoor clothes since, you know, we like moved to Ireland and all. Yeah, so we actually have repurposed some of our clothes that people usually you wear outdoors to wear inside to keep us warm and toasty during these cold winter months. Another way of staying warm is comfortable socks or thicker socks than you would regularly wear with shoes. Like for example, big fat woolly socks. They can be comfy too. Also house shoes. I remember I used to have a pair of hedgehog slippers. Bought them at pennies, which probably wasn't the smartest choice and probably why they weren't that warm. So for this year on the budget, we have trying to find some bit more durable house slippers. So if you have any recommendations, let us know in the comments. One of the warmest places in your house is probably the kitchen, at least when you're cooking. So if you didn't know, the rum usually gets up very early and he used to eat fish fingers in the morning. So by the time I walked into the kitchen, the oven would have nicely warmed it up. And especially once we're done, we just prop it open like that to let the hot air come out and heat the room where we eat breakfast. I have heard, um, well, it's not really much evidence, it's just listening to Blind Boy podcast, but I've heard that some older Irish people actually do not prefer to use the oven because they feel it's like kind of like a waste of electricity if you just put in one thing, so they put in more things at a time. We kind of, we kind of do, we do a lot of veg, vegetables, it's like, Lazy vegetables, just cut them up, put them in, done. <laughs> That's our style. There is one thing for Irish sort of interior design for kitchens. That's my absolute favorite thing. And it's having a tin for your tea bags just there on the counter next to the kettle. I never got away with that in Austria, just keeping my tea everywhere around the kitchen. People get annoyed. It has to stay in, in my drawer, in my cupboard. But now, I have my tea tin and it gets to stay on the counter and it's right there. It's zero effort to make a nice cup of tea. And those were our five ways that we keep pretty warm in the cold Irish homes. Well, not cold all year round, but you know, during the winter time especially. Of course, we'll be back with another video next week. Make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you won't miss it. And in the meantime, check some of our other videos about living in Ireland and moving here. Until next time, bis später. Bye.